guys welcome let me show you this beautiful quilt now tell me tell me you don't like this look at it it's blooming gorgeous so if you want to see how I actually made this all you gotta do is subscribe that's it nothing else just subscribe and say hey Karen girl I love it let's get started All right, guys so this is the layout I've done so far and um, when I say layout this is the colors I'm going with so I'm working um, with fours so each block is going to be four now as I said I'm not going to tell you which is my fabrics I'm going to leave it for a little bit so as you're looking at them see if you can figure out which is which okay now my objective here really is to make sure the colors are different on each of the four rows together so I, i'm trying not to add the same amount of colors so for example i don't want too many reds in one block or i don't want too many blues i want it to be spread out throughout okay so this is where i am at i am going to sew them together and um, we will take it from there so again just choose your colors however you want to put them together and um, we'll take it from there and see where we go. So for like example, this one I'm doing here now, again, this has this blue here and that. So I don't mind two sets of blues together as long as it's a different color blue, all right? All right, so I'm gonna lay it all out, sew it, and then we'll take it from there. Okay guys, so after I laid them out, what I did is took a pin pin them all together and I'm just stacking them next to the sewing machine I'm, and I'm going to just simply sew them together as they are. I mean, if at this point, this is a point whereby if you want to change the layout in terms of what fabric goes next to what fabric, this is the point to do that um, before you sew it together. And that's simply it and just stitch together. Okay, so blocks are sewn together. Now the next step is to trim the blocks down to the correct size. So as it is, it comes up short on one side and long on the other side. So this is an untrim block and this one is a trim one. So hopefully you can see the difference there. Okay, now once you've done that and you've trimmed it up and it's nice and even, you need some smaller squares. So we are going to be adding some smaller squares to the corners of the block. So I'm going to put that one there, that one there, and I'm putting them front sides down. Okay, so both front sides are together. Now I have taken the liberty of drawing some lines from point to point just so that I can demonstrate to you what I'm referring to. So you're going to do that for all of the small squares, okay? Now, after a while, you may not necessarily need to draw this. You will sort of eyeball it correctly. The important thing here is that when you are sewing, you need to ensure that you are sewing just a hair marker on the right of this line. Why do I say that? Because if you sew directly on the line, you will find that once you've trimmed this away, okay, and you fold it back to make your square point, which is what you'll be doing, you will find that sometimes it comes up a bit short. But if you give yourself just a tiny little bit extra room and just sew just right above that line, 
then you find that both of your angles or both of your points will meet and be nice and straight okay so you're going to put that down there now next thing to bear in mind for those of you who are beginners when you draw your point and you place it on your actual block you need to ensure that it goes from this end to that end and i think drawing the line on and initially just to get your brain engaged so that you remember what you're doing is good all right so the the line needs to line up from that end of the fabric to this end here okay do not do it like so because then you'll be placing it incorrectly and the likelihood of you sewing it like that because sometimes we go into automatic gear don't we we do things sometimes without thinking so once you've done that you can pin it on once you've placed it on correctly you can pin it on there just to make sure it's secure what i tend to do and uh, when i first started is to pin it on this side put a little pin there so that it reminded me that that is the area that i'm trimming off i know it may sound silly but sometimes we need little little just little reminders okay now once you've sewn it on on all four sides you will then need to trim it off and I'll bring one in and show you what that looks like. So this is one with all of the smaller squares trimmed off at the back. So ideally you would have the initial um, strip there with the white together, but you don't have that because I've already cut it off and you would have had it folded over like this because this is what it would look like, isn't it? It would look like so. All right, because ideally you would have already trimmed off this piece here. So you would have had it like so. I'm just making sure I go through it so that the, the understanding is there. Okay, so that's what it would look like. But you trim that away and you will fold it back. You can do the finger press and then I will just put a, a, a hot eye and you just stamp it. Do not move it about because what I do find is that with smaller pieces of fabric like this, it tends to warp. And I do find that if you just put a very medium heat, not steam, there's no need for steam. Just put it nice and hot, just nice and stamp on there. You can see my iron on and all I did was just that and that and it was done quite easily. Right. But as I said, you can even finger press it. It's no big deal. So that is what the block is going to look like once you have finished it. Now this block is called a snowball block. It's a very easy block, very simplified. Okay. Now the next step now is to lay it out. So let me go show you some ideas that I think I have come up with or we, I can figure out as we talk to each other via the camera <laughs> all right guys let's move on okay guys so i'm going to put some ideas on my display little board here so that just to get to generate some ideas of where i want to go to next so um i've already placed my first block there along with a sashing and a sashing there now <coughs> you can choose to lay the blocks out horizontal or vertical so if I put it um, vertical it would look like this okay so you can choose which way you like I do like it horizontal so remember it's one block there sashing another block sashing and um, another block so you can carry on with that so that particular way and keep adding um, as you go all right so if I were to separate it with a sashing let's see how that looks so each row will have a sashing there and that one there as well Okay, that looks good. That's coming together nicely. I do like that. I do like that idea. So that looks good. If I were to continue, I'll just do a little bit quickly and just add it on. So again. I'll do another two so we can get a better idea.
Okay, so that's one variation. And of course, I will just continue along. I do intend to have four rows, I think, four or five rows. Um, but this is just to give me some ideas. So that's one layout. Bearing in mind, I can choose to not to have any space in between here. So that will mean that I will have a long strip of fabric going all the way down like so. So then you will have a little design with all of the background fabric coming together in the middle there. Now that design is okay. I'm going to try something else and then see what happens. So I am going to remove this here and what I'm going to do is if I add a cornerstone, what would it look like? So. Okay, I don't know. It looks on it looks nice like that. So this is the other layout with the cornerstones in between the blocks. I do like that. Okay, it does look nice actually. <laughs> I'm so silly. It does look nice. I'm I'm loving that one. Um I'm gonna try something else and see. I'm gonna remove the sashings in between. And see what it looks like um, that will mean that what I would also need to remove the cornerstones as well so let me try that one and I'll come back to you Okay, guys, so what do you think? All right, so I'll tell you what I'm thinking. I am thinking to alternate the level in the drop of the block. Now, when I look at this from my angle where I'm standing here, to me, it looks like lanterns. So um, it will mean that I would have to change the idea in my head and probably do some tassels at the end of the block so that it levels out at the bottom but if i have say five rows um and i've made 20 blocks all together right so that's where we're to start one two three four five one two three so this is 15 here so then um one more row yeah i think that will be fine with the sashing in between and alternate the level of the drop of the lanterns and then that way I can I can do some applique with it. I don't know if you're following where I'm going with this, but that was um, what I'm thinking. I'm kind of liking this one, to be honest. So all I've done is join the blocks together. It will mean that um, I have to match the seams where the, the blocks actually form here. Okay. And I also have to make sure that I don't have similar colors next to each other in order to show the print up better. Um, so for example, if I remove this one and put this one in there. So that's what I'm thinking. I am kind of partial to this one. What I did do is add a cornerstone up there. So I'm thinking I can do cornerstone at the top 
and at the bottom of each of the rows so that's where I'm going with that but not in the middle I'm kind of liking this one to be honest yeah but I'm not sure I do like all three layouts but um, I will see which one I go with now some of these um, patterns they need to go a particular way because I can see by looking at them some of them is upside down so if you do something like this you then need to be sort of careful with the pattern make sure it's the right side up okay so what I'm going to do is choose a pattern and then I will decide obviously once I've chosen and I'll start sewing it together and hopefully I'll just show you the layout the whole completed quilt um, rather than stopping and coming back again so wish me luck guys I hope you like it I have three options to go with um, yeah <laughs> I hope you like it all right let's see where I go <laughs> okay guys so to sew this together all you need to do is add on your strip there and then add on the other one like so and you will do that for the entire row okay and then once you've done that you then need to concentrate on making up the sashing row and then you will do the same you add this to your little cornerstone there and then you will do that again for the entire row and this is what it will look like so then you will add it to the previous row okay so that's the quilt top almost done that's what it should look like once you've completed so what I'm going to do now is simply um, add the borders and get it quilted okay guys so the quilt is now completed this quilt measures 54 by 56 and it's a beautiful lap size quilt nice size now you're looking at it from a horizontal sorry no a vertical view when I designed it I designed it to be laid on a horizontal setting so this is how I see it normally all right so um, one of the things I did with these strips of fabrics I did add in some of my own strips into the quilt now looking at the quilt right now I don't think you will be able to pinpoint it but I will share them with you before I end the video now before we do anything else let me just go in a little bit closer and show you the quilting now I just used a meandering swirl all over the um, quilt okay I'll go in a little bit closer so hopefully you can pick it up now one of the reasons I chose that particular pattern is because of all the colorful prints I don't usually do anything too fancy when it comes to quilts such as this because it's pointless you really can't see the quilting okay now on the background I use a Christmas fabric okay and I felt that really worked and you're wondering well, why would I do that now the reason I chose a Christmas fabric is because I wanted to continue the gold tones within the Japanese prints and the Japanese prints has a lot of them some of my fabrics if I have to be honest well I will I did use some Christmas prints because you don't necessarily get a gold tone on normal fabrics tell a lie I did find a normal gold fabric a gold tone and that is pictured here on the border okay however the Christmas fabrics do tend to be a lot of gold tones now the fabrics that I actually added to the quilt were these ones here this one uh, this one here you can clearly see that's a Christmas fabric that one here this one here is from the same strip of fabric okay and I think oh yes just one more this one here is one of my fabrics now well I obviously added them because I didn't have a lot of the Japanese prints remember I got these from Timu but I wanted to bring my own strips of fabric and I, and I know that I can do that and that's the reason why I use Christmas prints now saying that this one is not a Christmas print nor is this one but because of the colors is why I use them and because they were also flower prints enabled me to fit it in without 
the untrained eye absolutely noticing that. Okay, but overall it's a beautiful quilt. As I said, on the border I did um, go back and add a purple and gold print and I think that really frames up the whole quilt really nicely. It just really brings it together really beautifully. Okay, on the binding I did went back and use this particular print here and I added it for the binding as I said. Okay, now also the cornerstones, these were batiks. And you're wondering why would I add batiks in there? Well, I felt that it lifted the whole profile of the quilt. You were able to see the blue is really strong and it also offered a little bit of subtle tones that's already within the quilt, as you can see. Yeah, so it had those blue tones that I wanted to pick up from the quilt itself. So I really, really enjoyed doing that. The quilting on the actual cream fabric here, it is not a Christmas print, this border fabric. It is just a cream and white flowery print on the background of the fabric itself. But it worked because I felt it really framed the whole quilt. Now in the pattern, I will give you instructions if you wanted to make the quilt bigger. So this one is a lap size. You can make a throw size, you can make a bed size, a queen size, etc. So in the pattern there will be details for that. But saying that, I love the quilt as it is. Ideally, I do feel at this size, it, to me it poses more as a wall quilt and it looks really beautiful. Now I'm calling this quilt Japanese lanterns because to me it reads that, even though it doesn't have the tassel etc on it, I think it reads that to me. And I do love it. It's really beautiful, absolutely beautiful and soft quilt. And why is it soft? Obviously because of the batting and because of the quilting. Now, even though I used meandering, I did also do that on the borders as well. But I did it quite large so that, you know, I give this soft tone um, to the quilt itself. But guys, it's a really lovely quilt. On the back, I just use very simplistic white spots on blue, and I think that works. Now, I could have gone for the objective of having a really powerful, strong colour at the back, but I thought something simplistic was okay. Why? Because I felt I already used up so many colours at the front, and I wanted to tone it down at the back. And I also like showing off the quilting when you have a very simplistic pattern of print on the back of the fabric. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Do let me know. Can't wait to hear your feedback on this one. If you would consider using the Japanese prints. And do remember, you don't have to use that. You can use any other jelly roll fabrics that you have and make the, the quilt. It is really down to you, whatever. Fabric you see any YouTube YouTuber use for their quilt, you can always adapt to yours. You can use scraps as well. I mean, and this does give a scrappy element to it because not all of the strips are the same. So you can use scraps for it. A beautiful quilt. I think it will look lovely as a bed quilt. Definitely with some throw pillows, etc. But absolutely gorgeous. Imagine this as a table runner very very beautiful so do like and subscribe hit that notification bell it's absolutely free to do so and of course subscribe can't wait to hear from you and i will see you next week guys love you so much thank you for all the support and kind words and encouragement that you've given me and i really look forward to reading your comments so bye for now happy quilting and i will definitely definitely see you next week Love you loads. Bye.